So here, I'm playing the HDR version of this famous beach scene in episode 7 of House of the Dragon on two displays, namely an LG C2 OLED on your left, and a Sony BVM H6310 dual layer LCD mastering monitor costing £30,000 on your right. At the beginning, both displays were fairly similar in terms of overall brightness. However, as the scene progressed, you can see the picture on the LG OLED gradually dimming down, so much so that by the time the storyline cut to the dragon taming sequence, the image on the LG C2 had become significantly darker than on the Sony H6310 reference monitor, with shadow detail looking substantially crushed. And you may not even realize this auto dimming has taken place until you summon the user menu, which then restores the brightness on screen. The reason why most OLED televisions will partake in this sort of auto dimming behavior is because of just how dark this particular segment in House of the Dragon Episode 7 has been graded to. Here, I'm using the inbuilt waveform monitor on a Canon reference monitor to analyze this beach scene. Because the first level on the graph starts at 50 nits, and the picture on screen is clearly well below that. Let us try and put in a reference line for one nit. To do that, I've downloaded the PQ Calc app on iOS, which lets you convert nits to PQ code values. And if we enter one nit into the calculator, it returns a 10 bit PQ code value of 195. So let's manually add a reference line of 196 on the waveform monitor, signifying roughly one nit in terms of luminance from the video source signal. And as I play through this beach scene from House of the Dragon Episode 7, you can see just how dark this sequence has been graded to, mostly not even exceeding one nit, with only the occasional shimmering of her earring and crystal embroideries jumping to above 50 nits. Now, because of so many complaints by viewers, HBO had to actually come out and tweet that the dimmed lighting was an intentional creative decision. While I'm all about respecting the original creative intent. Heck, I blew £30,000 on a reference monitor just to display movies in the most accurate manner possible. I think a peak of 1 to 2 nits is simply too dark in HDR for several reasons. 1. For critical viewing of HDR material, the recommended surround luminance should be 5 nits, according to documents from the International Telecommunication Union and also from Dolby Laboratories which developed the HDR10 PQ standard. By capping a scene to a maximum of 1 to 2 nits, it's going to be even darker than the background light illumination even in a reference viewing environment, increasing the risk of shadow detail being overpowered by ambient lighting. And 2. Such low luminance levels will amplify many problems on consumer televisions in the real world, which some DPs and colorists who are creating content on a £30,000 mastering monitor may not be aware of. Some people have suggested that, oh, you need to buy a better TV, one that's capable of 1000 nits in HDR, or oh, you need to dial in the correct TV settings, or oh, you need to buy an OLED TV to watch House of the Dragon correctly. But I've tested almost all of the flagship TVs from various manufacturers in 2022, and none of them don't suffer from issues during these very dark scenes, even after full calibration. As demonstrated in the intro, the majority of consumer OLEDs will gradually dim down over time during prolonged dark HDR sequences, due to a protective mechanism implemented on OLED televisions to reduce the risk of permanent burn-in. On certain OLED models, you can disable the auto-dimming by going into the service menu, but unfortunately, this also carries the risk of 1. Breaking your OLED TV if you don't know what you are doing. Or 2. Voiding your warranty if the TV manufacturer bothers to check the service log. Furthermore, many consumer OLED TVs exhibit dark uniformity issues such as thin vertical streaks or side vignetting, which will rear their ugly heads during playback of very dark HDR sequences, such as the ones in House of the Dragon. In addition, through my testing and side-by-side -side comparisons, I found that the current, first generation of QD OLED TVs would actually appear desaturated at low luminance levels compared to a reference monitor, 
therefore deviating from the creative intent. At this point, you may ask, in that case, Vincent, will a high-end mini-LED television fare better? Well, even the best mini-LED TVs will have their own problems in dimly lit sequences, largely owing to the lack of pixel-level light control. Depending on the TV brand and model, some mini-LED TVs may manifest some backlight instability, or a bluish hue in the shadows from the natively blue backlight, which is beyond the reach of the internal LUT correction. Some local dimming algorithms may crush some shadow detail to maintain inky blacks and keep blooming at bay, hence making shadow detail even harder to see. Moreover, the pixel response time of certain VA-type LCD panels becomes slower the closer you get to black, leading to more ghosting and smearing artifacts in very dark scenes. Note that on Samsung televisions, certain dark areas would turn blue or purple in HLG or hybrid log gamma format, which is how House of the Dragon is streamed in HDR from SkyQ boxes and Sky Parks in the UK and some other countries. This is not a Sky problem, because very dark shows on BBC iPlayer in HLG also exhibited blue-infused shadows on Samsung TVs. Until this problem is fixed, one way Samsung TV owners can watch House of the Dragon without bluish or purplish shadows is by using a VPN, such as Surfshark VPN which lets you stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there. So even if you are not based in the United States, you can subscribe to HBO Max and watch House of the Dragon in HDR10 with more accurate dark colors on Samsung TVs instead of with undesirable blue or purple posterization in HLG. Surfshark has even published instructions on how to set up its VPN on an Apple TV or whatever source device you are planning to use. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 83% off, as well as 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, here's the bottom line. It's all very well and good for some colorists to grade on a £30,000 reference mastering monitor in a dimly lit grading suite, and say that it's the creative intent but they have to understand that when their carefully crafted work is transferred across to the real world, not many consumer televisions can reproduce a sequence that's capped to one to two nits as cleanly and as accurately as on a reference mastering monitor, especially with compression which is more likely to fall apart in very dark scenes. As someone who has access to several reference monitors, and who has tested most of the high-end consumer TVs over the past 15 years, always paying extra attention to down below, I wish more creative professionals in the video industry would understand the disparity between professional and consumer displays, and stop putting SDR content in an HDR container, mastering to a peak of 200 nits, or producing HDR segments with a peak of 1 to 2 nits, all while hiding behind the convenient excuse of creative intent. Because these conservative practices rarely result in a good consumer viewing experience, yet consume more energy and power than in SDR. To be fair, some brighter elements in this House of the Dragon episode, such as the fire in a preceding scene, did deliver decent HDR impact in a dark room, peaking at around 400 nits according to the waveform monitor. But I genuinely wonder what's the logic of clamping the beach scene to below 1 or 2 nits, which is even dimmer than the recommended surround light level of 5 nits, especially since the original footage was shot in daylight and then darkened in post, so there should be plenty of light to begin with. Anyway, here's what you should do to give yourself a fighting chance of seeing some detail in these dark House of the Dragon scenes. Close the curtains, and switch off your room lights. No, not to prepare yourself for a wank, but to let your pupils open up and pick up more shadow detail. Alternatively, choose to forego HDR and watch the SDR version instead. In SDR, 
you can increase the backlight or OLED light on your TV and also brighten the gamma to make the scene look brighter and more watchable in the presence of ambient light. Whereas in HDR, the backlight or OLED light and contrast on your TV are usually already maxed out, with the gamma setting grayed out, meaning that there's less headroom to brighten up the HDR picture. Watching in SDR is also less likely to trigger auto-dimming on OLED TVs, as long as you keep peak brightness away from the high setting. Given how dark and murky House of the Dragon is in general, I don't think you will be missing out on much by not watching it in HDR. If there's enough interest from you guys, say 100 YouTube comments asking me to do it, I'll do a side-by-side -side video comparison of SDR versus HDR in House of the Dragon to show you the differences. Regardless of whether you're watching in SDR or HDR, there's one sneaky setting buried in the user menu on your TV, which will make House of the Dragon look significantly darker than it should be. To find out what the setting is and how to disable it to see more detail in the show, please watch my instruction video by clicking here.